The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, protecting your treasures from the enemy. Like, get a clue. Like, there are treasures out there. I mean, like, let's be like, whoa. I mean, like, it's all around us in this, in the, in this economy, in this uh, desperate condition that our nation is in. So say it one more time. There are treasures. I mean, there are treasures out there, and I want them. Taking your treasure back next. So I can see looking out here in this room that there's a spirit of a family here. Even though y'all may have come from all over the, the place, we're family, you feel it. You knew it the minute I saw family here. You all knew that. You could see the, the love exchange. Well, we're glad all of you are here. And uh, it, these are really important moments. These are really important moments. So just know that the, the fact you are alive now you may say, well, I guess I'll be alive when Jesus comes. W perhaps. Even, even we might say, like, well, here's, here's, here's what you can know. You can be very much alive when his glory comes on his church to reveal himself to the world through his church before he comes for his church. See, that's the longing of the heart of God. That's the longing of God's heart to behold his glory in his church like on y'all like on you sweetheart mm -hmm. his glory father that's my prayer I long for it for your glory to be manifest to the world through the church. In Jesus' name. Here's Beth Moore. Welcome, Beth Moore. Wednesdays with Beth. You and I in this series are going to have one goal in mind, to take our treasures back. I, I promise you, based on the authority of the Word of God, if you have any history with the Lord Jesus Christ whatsoever, He has invested treasures in you. He has gone out of His way over and over again to give you moments, encounters, insights that were priceless. And you need them back. They're yours. They're yours. And the enemy has come to steal them. And we're going to take them back. Somebody say, I'm taking my treasures back. I mean, we got we, we, I mean, to get like mad every now and then. Like the, the nerve of him to come and steal from us and take the treasures that Christ has invested in us. So we're going to make a series of points. And the first one is this. It's got to start here. Number one, there are treasures out there. There are treasures out there. Number one, there are treasures out there. Now, when I say this to this group, I mean it from you too. So I want you to get really interactive here. I want you to say that point back to me. Number one is what? There are treasures. There are treasures out there. This is such a wonderful group that they already did it really well, but I'm going to get them to do it one more time because I, I want you to do it in such a way that it's like it's almost like, like shocking, like, like get a clue, like there are treasures out there. I mean, like, <laughs> let's be like, whoa. I mean, like, it's all around us in this, in the, in this economy, in this uh, desperate condition that our nation is in, and all of, of the poverty of the world, what, what the Word of God would tell us is that if we know Christ, I mean, like, there are treasures out there. So say it one more time. There are treasures out there. there, are treasures out there. I mean, there are treasures out there, and I want them. I want the ones that were set aside for me. You want the ones that are set aside for you. I mean, this is, this is a dark world. I want my treasures. I even want my treasures in darkness, as uh, the prophet Isaiah said. I, I want my treasures. And let me show you something. To treasure something is different than being astonished or amazed by it. Um, remember when it says that the, the people that had heard all of these things, I, I drew your attention to it when I read it in verse 18, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. Um, the NIV says they were amazed. They were amazed. 
a number of times in the gospel, this would be a good word study, uh, you'll see that the people were amazed at something Jesus had done. But I, I want to suggest to you amazement and treasuring are two very, very different things. Because amazement, you're, you don't have to be altered by amazement. I mean, you're just having a moment. We love a big, amazing moment. I mean, like, that was awesome. But do we live the same way through the course of the rest of the day? That's what would set it apart. I mean, like, amazing, awesome, but I'm still myself. But I treasure something when I take that amazing thing, that awesome thing, that wonder God has done, and I put it and protect it in my heart and mind. Suddenly now I am altered by it. Does that make sense? Amazement feels good, but it doesn't do a lot of good. Amazement lasts for a moment. But now your treasures, you're meant to have that for the rest of your life. Amazement goes, that is treasure. Treasure goes, I'm going to pull that into my heart and mind and hang on to it for dear life. And wouldn't it be the scariest thing if we missed the whole point of something? That's why you want to treasure it. Because right then you don't get it, but you know it's going to mean something. You, listen, if you don't know today, I, I, want to just, I want to tell you, biblically speaking, it's all going to mean something. It's all going to tie up together. It's all going to lay out beautifully. Every puzzle piece will be put in its place. And we're going to see that in the very um, series that we're doing together. So number one was what? There are treasures out there, but number two, this one's important. They're not my treasures until they make it past my defenses. They're not my treasures until they make it past my defenses. Jot that down because that's important. Yes, there are treasures out there, but how do they go from out there to in here? There's got to be a process of the treasure that is out there coming in here, and how's it get there? Well, number two says, they're not my treasures until they make it past my defenses. Now, you're in the Gospel of Luke. Go with me, leave something here. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Familiar scriptures uh, to some of us. Matthew 6, and I want you to listen to it in context with our present series. Matthew 6, 20 and 21 says this, or I'll start at 19. Do not lay up for yourselves, what's that word? treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves, what? In heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So whatever you treasure has got to make it into your heart. Because that's where it's got to be pondered. So it's not just into our head. It's got to make it into our heart. That's why, even though there are treasures out there, they do not become my treasures until they make it past my defenses. They've got, to, they've got to come through all the defenses over my heart and make it down inside of it. Now, I want you to think this through because what I want to suggest to you is this. What you and I truly treasure in life is never just cerebral. It's also emotional. Whatever it is you treasure and whatever it is I truly treasure, I have an emotional attachment to it and not just an intellectual attachment to it. Does that make any sense to you? Because whatever we treasure, we have laid up in our hearts for where our treasure is. There you will find our hearts. So it, it seems obvious where people or relationships are concerned, but maybe not so obvious where non-relational treasures are, um, and I want you to see that they're just as tied to our hearts. For, for example, if we treasure money, if we treasure prosperity, it won't be just because we want to have plenty to pay the bills. Now, I'm talking about if you really treasure it, like you like protect it, you guard it in your heart, you ponder it a lot. Like I mean, like it is a treasure to you. Your money is a treasure to you. If you do, it's not just because you want to play, pay the bills. It also has somehow your heart is tied up into it and my heart is tied up into it. There's also a heart issue with anything we treasure. If we treasure fame, it won't just be for the sake of being known. There's something of our heart that is wrapped up in that desire to be seen. Does this make any sense to anybody? If we treasure talent, it won't be because we just want to bring our gifting. I mean, if that's what we really treasure, not the one who gives it, but the talent itself. It won't just be because it's what we bring to the table. No, there, our heart is wrapped up in that somehow because anywhere our true treasure is, there you'll find 
our hearts. Same as our work, if that is what we treasure most in all of life, my heart is wrapped up in it. If we treasure position or acknowledgement, it's got a heart tied to it. It's not just cerebral. It's not just psychological. If we're dying in the wool sports fanatics. Now, I'm not, I'm not dogging that um, in any way. I happen to be coming to you in um, Dallas-Fort Worth. And so, listen, uh, this is the wrong place to dog sports and sports <laughs> fanatics. I promise you that. But I am saying that if that's what we treasure, so it's not just what we enjoy, not just what we um, uh, love on occasion to do, but what we truly treasure, because remember, that's got to be guarded in our minds. It's something we protect. It's something that we defend. We don't let it get ruined. Um, all of those things. If we treasure that, there's something in that for us. It's what uh, one um, uh, sociologist uh, called um, that B-I-R-G, that burging, uh, when it is that um, basking in reflected glory. Uh, that boy, if our team wins, we are winners when we were not out there. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm saying to you? We're not wearing the ring, but because it was our team, and so our heart is wrapped up in it. Because you find what a man or woman truly treasures. Where you find that, you will find something hugely significant about their heart. So whatever we're treasuring, it's not just a willing, but it is very much a feeling. So points one and two, so far one was what? There are, there are treasures out there. There are treasures out there. It's the best, best group. Best group. Um, <laughs> number two, they're not my They're not my treasures until they make it past my defenses. Now, number three, I, I pray that somebody's going to get a, a, a revelation here. Number three is this. Treasures strung together can bring healing. Treasures strung together can bring healing. Lord, give us understanding. Now, hold on to Matthew because, in fact, you know what? When you've written that um, just flip open to Matthew 13, but I also want you to hold on to, um, it'll be toward the middle of 13. It's going to be right at 15 where we're going to land, Matthew 13, 15. But hold on to Luke too, because I want to show you something. All right, rem remember in verse 50, in uh, Luke 2, verse 50, when it says, and they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them, that they, they were just like, what on earth has happened here? This is when they have lost Jesus for three solid days and come and find him. They're just like talking with everybody. They're on the temple grounds asking questions, answering questions, and said that he had extreme understanding that was just like phenomenal uh, for his age. And so his parents come and they, they didn't understand, but it says she treasured it. She treasured it. Now, one reason she's treasuring it is so that she can get understanding. Is that making sense? Because she, she's going to hold on to it um, until she gets it. She's going to get it. She's going to hope to get it. That These words are similar in their uh, basic form in uh, the Greek language. Now, go with me to Matthew 13, 15, and let me show you something. Treasures strung together can bring healing. Remember that that's our word. Verse 15 of Matthew 13, For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. Understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. Of course, in its, in its um, most forthright context, it is understanding enough to turn and then they receive the healing. But that word understand is very intriguing to me. I, I'm sure that at some point in the last years that I've gotten to uh, minister here on Wednesdays, I've brought this word out with you before because it is, it's such a mind blowing Greek term, but I want you to hear it again. It is a word in the Greek that means, I'm quoting now out of the lexical uh, dictionary, the comprehending activity of the mind denoted by this word entails the assembling of individual facts into an organized whole as collecting the pieces of a puzzle and putting them together. The mind grasps concepts and sees the proper relationship between them. This ability, this understanding is the ability to take what seems otherwise to be disconnected events and to begin to see that they are very much related. 
Now, these can be hard things, and I know this is a hard thing for you guys to hear from me. Occasionally, I get letters that it's just too much for someone to take uh, from a teacher, but I need you to know that after coming from a background of uh, childhood sexual abuse that went on off and on from the time I was this big until the time I was this big, I lived long enough to see that God had so used it in the ministry uh, to women that he had given me that really it was part of my puzzle. And that in the whole thing, by itself, it's an atrocity. And so is my background of just stupidity and foolishness in every conceivable relationship. But you know what? What God has brought from it, those puzzle pieces coming together, by itself, it's horrible. But all things work together for good. They work together, so it's not until they're all stuck together that somehow to have some puzzle pieces out there we can wait for the rest of them as long as we have a few. I want you to know they're all going to come together. We are going to see the entire puzzle put together. But if we'll stay tight with Jesus, we'll see him put enough things together that we've gone through that it's healing to us. I mean, that's healing to me to have seen some redemption come out of some terrible things in my life. It's been healing to me. This ability to put them together is something we see happening in this beautiful, beautiful uh, picture that's right here in um, Luke chapter 2. Because it says that she looked back in, in Luke 2 where we're told then that she pondered them in her heart. She treasured them in verse 19. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. That, that word pondered is also a really cool word. It's uh, the word, I'm, I'm going to use the lexical term in Greek, sumbalo, sumbalo. Uh, balo means to, to throw or to cast. Sum means together. It is the ability. She sat there and put a bunch of pieces together. Like they, they went back. They were all just like amazed. But she sat there and she treasured up the thing. And don't you know she reflected on uh, what her life was like when she was betrothed to Joseph. And then the angel of the Lord, Gabriel, comes and visits her. Don't you know that in that moment, she's playing back all of this? Maybe how her parents reacted after she told them. No wonder she ran to Elizabeth as fast as she could. <laughs> all, the journey, all the things that had happened in that moment, she just began pulling them together like jewels that she set on a string. And together, those pieces came together. And there was healing. To obtain information on Beth's teaching materials and for her speaking schedule, visit us online at lifetoday.org. I don't know all that that might have said to you when you think about, about Mary and uh, pulling the pieces together. Uh, but I know the healing is what God offers for all of us. And uh, God, I want it for you, the viewer, to be healed, to be touched, to be pulled together, to be able to pull things together and have it all submitted to your will in Jesus' name. I don't know a, a, a truth I could share with you. I don't know a promise I could give you that's any more important than the, the promise of God's blessings on those who notice the overlooked, unnoticed, the least of these, the ones most likely to be overlooked, when you notice them and when you do something meaningful, the Son of God, God with us, Jesus said, you've done it to me. If you ever want to do anything for Jesus, just find somebody overlooked and do something for him. Now, I want you to look at some people. I don't know how we could overlook them, but let's don't. Let's notice them, and let's do something for them as unto the Lord. And we will be doing it for Him. He said so. Watch. I, it's hard to believe I'm sitting, literally sitting in a garbage dump in Central America. And uh, I'm around uh, absolute filth and contamination and disease. And little Maria is, is walking through this every day with these little bare feet. They can get diseases 
They've got what is known as hookworms that get in their feet when they just walk in dirt or sand. And then it gets in their little intestines. Causes serious problems. We're gonna give children all over the world shoes. When I say we, that's all of us together. We want to be able to help these children. They're so worth it. You know, if it was our children, we would want someone to reach out to them. So please join with us and let's make that difference. Let's put some shoes on their feet and let's bless these precious little children. Little Maria has never known that. I'm pleading with you this day that you would find it in your heart to remember God's heart for the poor. And I pray this Christmas that you would bring that joy to her heart. That's what I'd love to see. We're going to get you some shoes, honey. You sweet thing. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I've been many times just in the same place that she was sitting where I had those same emotions. And uh, I don't think any of us can bear to look at pain if we don't think we could alleviate it. Anytime we see pain, even if it's a disease or a battle, we, something springs up inside of us, a hope for, for a cure. Well, for these little children, Betty, there's a, there's a cure for those diseases. Uh, there's a, a solution for the discomfort. And these really are, these are quite amazing shoes. I don't know if any of you have ever worn the popular shoes, the Crocs, they call them. This is, this is just about the exact same thing, and those last for such a long time. This is gonna last a long time. It's even, this one's adjustable as children grow where they can wear it for a long time. And Betty, this is something that all of our viewers can do. When you think about $3.60, and by the way, you buy one of those kind of shoes around here, you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. I could put a whole lot of shoes out. But, but you got $36, and we got 10 children some shoes. And uh, you, you multiply that out, and, and uh, seventy-two dollars, and you've got twenty kids' shoes. And I, I think that our viewers want to do this. I do too, James. And it's not just about the shoes themselves, but it's so much more because these children get all the cuts and the bruises. You saw where they walk, where they have to climb over and stuff, they, the trash that they walk through. There's no doubt that sometime or other their foot's going to get cut and then the infection's allowed to grow and then it goes over their whole body. So it's so much more than just putting something on their feet. It's a protection. It's a health protection. So I hope you will join with us and let's do this for the children. And we have coupled with the the uh, Christmas shoes, what we also call Christmas smiles. We've well, got little children that have some kind of facial deformity and normally a cleft palate. And those surgeries average about $500. And we're asking you to give shoes and smiles for Christmas, which I'm, I want to ask you very directly. Could you give $500 to give a child a smile for Christmas? That, that gift lasts a lifetime for them and for their family. Could you give $1,000 and perhaps give two children smiles? or give many children pairs of shoes. If you can make a gift, $144, $72, 36 whatever it is, you're gonna help us provide shoes for Christmas and smiles for Christmas, whatever God puts on your heart. We wanna send you the book that our son wrote. He is a brilliant, brilliant person. And he wrote about discovering the deeper joy than you ever imagined. God wants you to be happy, but he helps you understand what happy means from God's perspective and how you can experience. It's an incredible book. We're sending this to say thanks for any gift that you make. And we have other gifts that we want to send you that'll be a blessing to you. And many of you remember that if you're able to help us with a, a major gift of say, those smiles we talked about with a thousand dollars, we're sending the bronze, the lion and the lamb. We want to bless you. And we want to thank you for making that gift. Dial the number, take your bank card, use it like a check. Please do it. Would, would you go do that right now? Give the smiles, give the shoes. If you want to go online, it's lifetoday.org. Make the gift there. If you write a check, call us and tell us what you're putting in the mail. Make it to life. Address it to life. Thank you for doing that. Poverty is a killer. And because of it, children needlessly suffer, not only from a lack of food and clean water, but also from a lack of things we take for granted, such as a healthy smile or a simple pair of shoes. For most of these children, they've never owned a new pair of shoes. 
And while that may seem minor in the light of all their needs, walking with bare feet puts them at risk of life-threatening infections that could lead to crippling consequences, disease, and even death. By responding today, you can help life immediately secure and begin shipping Christmas shoes to 200,000 children around the world just in time for the holidays. Your gift of $36 will provide 10 pairs of shoes. A gift of $72 will provide 20 pairs. And a gift of $144 will help provide 40 pairs of Christmas shoes for children in need. In appreciation of your gift, be sure to request the inspirational new book, God Wants You to Be Happy, by James and Betty's son, Randy Robison. With your gift of $100 to help provide 28 pairs of shoes, you may request this beautifully crafted shoe ornament to place on your tree each Christmas. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,000 or more to help provide two children with corrective cleft palate surgeries, and you may request the Lion and the Lamb bronze sculpture. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. I hope and I pray on some tiny little feet and some bigger feet, you'll put some shoes. And with all my heart, I'm praying there are several people that'll give $1,000 for shoes and smiles. But it, it's the $500 surgery to repair the little cleft palate and the little facial issues and give a child a smile. <laughs> Mom and dad and family and the child. Make those gifts. We've got gifts for you. You know that. We thank you. I do want to remind you the Christian vote pen is being sent to everyone who asks for Indivisible. Um, and we hope you'll be praying. It's not right or left. It's God's will. What do you want, Lord? Have your way. Use me to express what perhaps is in your heart. Let's vote. God bless all of you. Thank you for being here. Family and freedom are under attack. James Robinson and Jay Richards encourage a divided America to stand together before it's too late. Indivisible, now available in paperback at online and retail bookstores. When in college, Gwen and Brad covered up her pregnancy with an abortion. Join us tomorrow as Gwen, one of the girlfriends in God, shares her journey from broken to beautiful. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.